The Camino de Santiago, or the Way of St. James, a historic pilgrimage dating back to the 9th century, ending at the burial shrine of the Apostle of Jesus. Since the late 800s AD, faithful pilgrims from across the globe have packed their belongings and set their sights toward Santiago in search of healing, an attempt at penance, or to seek spiritual renewal. Though the Camino Primitivo is the oldest of the numerous routes, the Camino Francis is the most famous. Starting in St. John Pied de Port, France, and traversing the Pyrenees through the north of Spain, the route encompasses 800 kilometers of stunning landscapes, quaint mountain towns, and historic monuments. For centuries, local communities have, and still do, welcome and support pilgrims with open hearts and open hands. Traditional albergues or pilgrim hostels line the trail, and medieval churches still welcome walkers for a quiet moment of solitude. The way is fraught with difficulties, physical, mental, and spiritual in nature. It's a journey of the feet, the will, and the soul. Today, the way is certainly more cush and commercialized than its medieval counterpart, but the essence of the journey remains. It's a conglomerate of peoples, a place to meet and converse with individuals from every nation and tongue. It's now a hodgepodge of religions, cultures, and motivations, but at the core of it still lies a historic venture, an almost palpable tie to our past, and a communal spirit that endures despite the evolution. The way is both a personal journey and a group effort, and it's a one-of-a-kind adventure. I just put deodorant all over my face. This is the sunscreen. This is my deodorant <laughs> that I just rolled all over my face. How is it? Not too bad. It's like time to go. It is 7.30 on April 23rd, Sunday, and it is the official start of our Camino de Santiago. Today we leave St. John P. de Port and we head for Roncevaux. It's 26 kilometers up and over the Pyrenees, which is like 16 miles, folks. And it's supposedly like straight up all day long. We did not want to go all the way to Roncevaux. We wanted to stop halfway, a little bit before halfway in Orison, but we could not get a bed there. So on to Roncevaux it is, and let's hope I make it without whining too much. Honey, we're finally on the Camino. I mean, it's been years of wanting to do this, and we're finally doing it. Yay! Well, they didn't lie. It was straight up from the very start. As soon as you leave the city, it was woo. 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 So, the other day when we were getting our Camino passports, the little lady was absolutely adorable, but she didn't speak very good English. <laughs> no. She was an older lady, probably in her 80s. She was so cute. And she said, now when you come down the mountain, if you go this way, you will whoosh, 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 all the way down. She's like, so, don't go this way. Go this way, very good, nice. <laughs> so we were intending not to whoosh, whoosh, whoosh down the mountain today. So, I'm getting a rock because on the way, you're supposed to carry a rock with you and set it at this cross and it's supposed to be setting down, uh, I guess, something you want to just leave behind on the, on the Camino. Look at me now! Look at me now! Look at me now! <laughs> uh, you're supposed to bring a rock from home. Uh, we forgot, and then we forgot to get one sent over, so we're just going to pick one up here on the trail and carry it and set it down. This is shale anyways, right? Yeah. So that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty uh, prevalent in Arkansas, so it'll work. Baby horses. Now the 
this is I think our first real bad hill the big switchback it's not big it's just like consistent it's consistent yeah we just passed the first refuge here at Junto and uh, good time for a little water break the wind has picked up like crazy which I'm sure you can hear but still just fantastic Well, as Ryan said, this first part of the Camino is pretty much all uphill, but holy cow, it's beautiful. Like cow herds everywhere, horses, baby horses, and sheep, and just like, so can't fault the view or the ambiance. It's pretty spectacular. The sun peeking through over the mountains gets me every time. You want to get some coffee? This is Refuge Orson. This is the first main refuge along the way. Um, it's not on the official trail, but it has become a really popular stop for pilgrims. Um, and so this is where we wanted to stay the night, but it was full. So we're trucking it all the way to the first traditional stop, but really cute place. toilets and a little coffee shop and all that jazz. It cools off fast when you're sweaty and you stop walking. I'm glad I have my best. wind again I don't know uh, let's just stay here <laughs> okay so it's finally stopped raining we've been walking in spitting like stinging rain for what the last five or six kilometers oh, yeah. maybe more we're not really sure what marker yeah. we're at right now um, but the worst thing has been the headwinds like this would be a tough hike any day this first part would be strenuous but with this wind like well I don't even know how fast it's blowing but it feels crazy and blowing right in your face every step is like trudging <laughs> free like water fountains and stuff at least this one this is the first one we've come to but it has like an emergency call button where you can call for help if you need and also it has like free wi-fi so that you can get wi-fi for a minute if you need to so that's kind of nice i'm pretty sure the 12th century pilgrims probably uh, had it a little tougher 
but for this pedigree now there's the free wi-fi all right guys so there's only really one spot today that you have to pay attention once you get to kind of this 112 help sign around kilometer what are we at like 24 ish 23 24 um there's a split in the road and you want to take the road to the right because the road to the left is very very steep um and pretty much everybody warns you don't don't go that way so you want to take the one to the footpath to the right and kind of head down this way We have finally hit the descent. So the last, when you turn off to that to the right, the last 4.2 kilometers are pretty much descending down the hill. So be careful, folks. Take it slow. Use your pole. So I'm changing to sandals for the descent. Yes, it's freezing. Yes, it's raining. But also, I find that if I don't want my big toes to kill me tomorrow, sandals for the descent are a good good way to go i see it i see it there she is and davis is trying to run off and leave me because he is ready to be there and he's just like we can take that shortcut down the mountain we can just go down this path go back down the hill I'm like davis it's day the fastest one way to get there is the straight shot as the, as the crow flies uh -huh. and we can just you know, like sprint down the, the hill. He forgets he has 40 year old knees. He's got a knee brace on his bum knee today. And um, it's day one of a 50 day journey. And he wants to run down the goat path. So thankfully he married someone with wisdom <laughs> and a stick. The town was a trick. You can't go straight to it. You have to go all the way around and through these cow fields and down these slippery hills. And now we're in the pretty forest again, which is nice. But also it started raining again. Good grief. We're almost there though. We made it. So we have arrived here in Roosevelt. Um, we are staying at an albergue here tonight, which is just the Spanish work for hostel, I believe. So it's the albergue de Oracia Ronzo. And it is the main one here. It's huge. They have a pretty good system when you come in, actually. Like you walk in, they give you a color necklace, your medal of honor, the lady said. And then you like wait for them to come out and call your color. And you kind of go in 10 at a time to get beds. We do have a reservation, but you still have to wait for like your turn of people to go in. Um, so we've been told that in the main albergues like this, the public ones, that they reserve half the beds and then they leave half open for walkers that are coming in. Now, the private ones don't do that, but the public ones do. So, uh, but yeah, this got, they got a pretty good flow going on here. Everybody's coming in about the same time. So there are definitely hundreds of us, <laughs> a lot of people staying in this albergue. So we got lots of roommates tonight. Um, hey, I'm tired. Um, <laughs> yeah, for sure. It wasn't quite as bad as I was thinking no. it was going to be. Mm -mm. The wind made it awful. Yes. And the rain. I uh, probably could handle just the rain, but the wind was so oh, yeah. right in the face. Uh, for 10 kilometers. But as soon as we left Orison, where we showed you, yeah, like a snack, orange juice. Yeah. For the next 10 kilometers, it was straight uphill with a headwind that was insane and just like stinging rain in the face. <laughs> but when it finally stopped, yeah. we were like, oh, this, like this okay. is still a little yeah. early, but like, I feel like I just lost 20 pounds immediately. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, yeah, that wind was just super grueling today. So, um, but you know what? We had a hard first day and. That's supposed to be the hardest one anyway. Yeah, I think that that's what everybody says. So after that, that was the hardest day. Should be smooth sailing from yeah. here on out. Nice. Lovely. All right, guys. So because we are insane, we are going to go. There's a stream that runs around this town. It's a really beautiful little stream. We're going to go take a nice bath to try to prevent our muscles from being so stinking sore tomorrow um that sounds nuts because it's raining and it's cold however 
We've done it after a couple of our big hikes in the States and it's like the only thing that seems to work to like for my hip flexors not to be killing me the next day. So even though it sucks super bad, it um, does alleviate the muscle pain really well. So I'm already dreading it, but it's going to be good. Uh -huh. Did you say me too? I'm dreading it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know it's good for you. Jeez. It's already cold. Surprisingly, y'all, I had to talk him into this today, True. which is normally, crazy. No. This, is normally, it, this is normally his This is normally his brilliant yeah. idea. Also, early in the walk today, I tweaked my like right hip flexor slash groin area. So like every other step today was a little painful. So I'm hoping if I can ice bath it, it will get better and not worse. Perfect spot right here. There's a little rapid. It looks perfect for two butts. It's gonna be good. Still? It hurts. Davis is crying. Oh my gosh. This is miserable. Uh, how far should how long should I wait? Sorry y'all, the GoPro went dead, so you didn't get to watch us like shake and shiver for very long, but um that was absolutely freezing and I can't feel my feet but hopefully I won't be hurting tomorrow so that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. it was decent. Not great, but decent. So today we go from Roncevo to Zubiri, mm -hmm. which is how um, far? I think it was 21 kilometers. About 21 kilometers. Yeah. But we have to hike to our breakfast first because the town to get breakfast in is like five kilometers away yeah. or something like that. Yeah. So here we go. So, quick bit of information that I forgot to tell you yesterday. On your stop in Roncevo, there's really only the one abrogate to stay at, and it is a big one. Um, but when you check in, they wouldn't let us get a meal ticket. We had to come back later at like 5.30. Um, so there's three little restaurants in town, and we thought we could just go eat at them. And you can, you can just go get dinner at one of the restaurants, but you cannot get the pilgrim meal unless you get a ticket at the Albergue. So even if you're gonna go to one of the other restaurants, you still have to get your ticket at the Albergue. So um, like we checked in at like 2.45, 3 o'clock. We had to come back at 5.30, stand in line, get our dinner ticket, and then we were able to present our dinner ticket at the restaurant to get the pilgrim's price for the meal. So just know you can just go to the restaurant if they run out of dinner tickets or if you're just don't want to wait until you're allotted time because they only do dinner at 7 and 8 30. it was a good meal it was 12 euros and we got pasta we got um, chicken and french fries we got a whole bottle of wine for our table and we got a yogurt dessert so pretty good meal for 12 euros so i was reading in my guidebook this morning and it was saying that this whole area was like kind of heavily steeped you know in the middle ages and witchcraft and that kind of thing and so some of these crosses that we see today were erected to like keep the witches out of town and like keep out the the voodoo hoodoo um like this one but then also the area like in the birch forest where we're going pretty soon apparently there was a lot uh, that's where like a lot of the um women who were sent to like burn for witchcraft i guess lived in this area or practiced in this area so we're walking through the creepy woods today. We've got a really cute, fluffy welcoming committee for all the pilgrims this morning. Hi, bud. Hi. Oh. Ow! Oh, you're mean. Okay, okay. <laughs> yep. 
tried to. He tried to. He doesn't have any teeth, I don't think. Okay, he's not a cute and fluffy welcoming committee. He bites. <laughs> yeah, he bites. <laughs> he bit me. <laughs> I've literally never had that happen before. And he was like a old dog. Uh -huh. Thankfully he didn't have much teeth. Don't, okay. don't pet him. Okay, day two is really nice because you're you're walking through like pasture land and forest, this little stream that like goes along the whole way with you, so you hear the babbling water. And there's all these like ancient stone bridges that you're walking across and yeah, it's really nice today. There's no typhoon wind in your face, so this is pretty lovely. We met back up with our Danish friends this morning, Nicholas and Christian. Dinner with them last night and happened to see you again this morning, so it's kind of nice. Kind of come and go and pass people, but they're super great. So, probably be hanging out with them for a while. I'm sure you'll see them at some point, but uh, yep. still beautiful today. Well, we found a nice little bench in this little cute little town, and we had our lunch. We had some uh, meat and cheese that we bought at the store and some nuts. And uh, I have a blister, so because <laughs> I was dumb yesterday, the other day, my foot got wet, my sock got out of the way, it got moved, and yeah, so we had to put a band aid on it, and hopefully, it'll hold. And my moleskin did not hold this morning, so Abby had to doctor me up. <sighs> but now we're off. We're falling apart already, guys. Day two, falling apart. Though most of the hike into Zubiri is absolutely beautiful, the last couple kilometers you are descending out of the Pyrenees and it is straight downhill. It's very, very rocky, it's very steep, it's quite slippery, and because of the injury I got the day before, it was also incredibly painful. So I pulled my groin muscle yesterday, I think, and um, so today it is like really hard to lift my leg and it's shooting pain down the side of my leg into my knee so it's pretty much it's a lot of up and downs today so I'm struggling um, it's a when I'm fine I'm fine and then it like seizes up and clenches and starts shooting pain down and it's like the worst I don't know nerve pain or something so um, I'm struggling today, but it's beautiful and we'll be all right. So almost there maybe, I think, I don't know. <laughs> After a few breakdowns and a lot of tears, we have finally made it to Zubiri. Um, I've got an official limp now. Needless to say, this beautiful little town is a site for sore knees. We did not have a reservation for this night, and since we arrived in Zubiri much later than we thought we would due to my injury, we were glad to get a bed at Albergue de Palo Avellano. It was the most expensive night we spent on the whole Camino at 18 euros per bed, but it had a lovely pilgrim's menu, a big living area, and a nice enough bunk room. And we probably would have paid a hundred bucks for a bed this night. We were just grateful to have a place to rest. 